in my prior videos I was talking about the um, directed energy weapons known as DEW, D-E-W, and I was talking about how these lasers are built by Lockheed Martin and I was showing you the connection between Israel's system, Raphael, and how Lockheed Martin is working with Israel to build the laser weapons as well and showing you different various connections that were important showing you that um, BlackRock is basically controlling the world and they have trillions at their disposal something that was stated during the WEF by King Charles III as we know but it's this CEO Larry Fink who is a Jewish man that is a CEO of BlackRock from my research I was able to find out that BlackRock has had violations against indigenous native peoples so this kind of goes together with the fact that BlackRock owns shares of Lockheed Martin okay so all of this stuff is connected and BlackRock owns basically the majority of media and one of the things that Oprah Winfrey is called is the queen of media so she's got to have shares which I just watched a video and she was talking about that that was one of the important things that she learned was that you know growing wealth and stuff was having shares in all of these different companies I wanted to play just a little bit of a clip that Oprah Winfrey was interviewed during a student-led interview at Stanford Graduate School of Business. Oprah Winfrey shared seminal moments of her career journey and the importance of listening to your instincts. Winfrey offered advice to students on how to find their calling, align your personality with your purpose, and no one can touch you, she says. Okay, so this was stanford.edu slash insights. I had such regard for that. And I just had a conversation with John Mackey, who runs Whole Foods, yeah. and has written this fabulous book. You should get it called um, Conscious Capitalism. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how the investment in the stakeholders, the people who you are serving, that connection between the people who you're trying to serve and sell to, is equally as important as the people who you're buying from, right. equally as important as the people who are, you know, supporting you financially, um, as your stockholders if you are, you know, you know, a public company. So I always understood that there really was no difference between me and the audience. At times I might have had better shoes, but at the core, yes. the core of, of, of what really matters, that we are the same. And you know how I know that? Because all of us are seeking the same thing. You're here at this fabulous school, and we'll go out into the world and each pursue based upon what you believe your talents are, what your skills are, maybe your gifts are, but you're seeking the same thing. I also brought in the fact that Vanguard and State Street, you know, they work with BlackRock, so all of them are in together. And I am astounded that RFK Jr. mentioned the same three groups of people. And I wanted to read this to you about what RFK Jr. said about BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard in particular. This is really something. Um, a video shared Monday by the hugely popular Wall Street Silver account on Twitter showed 2024 presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. warning Americans most of the country's real estate will be owned by one corporation by 2030. Now I told you that BlackRock was taking control of the single family homes. But listen to this because this brings in all of the connections I told you about the Kroger store and how BlackRock owns the shares in Kroger and we're now seeing super surveillance going on 
There were also television monitors that I did not see before as you enter, you know, photographing you with the CCTV. Not only that, but all of the CCTV cameras hanging down from the ceiling, little ones next to those, uh, the arms going up and over with the camera hanging down as you're self-checking on every single one of the checkout. RFK Jr. says there are three giant corporations, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. The very three that I've been talking about, which are connected to the laser energy weapons and the grocery store surveillance. Okay, so these three own collectively, they own each other, so it's really one giant corporation but they also own 89% of the S&P 500. They own everything, RFK said in what appears to be an interview on The Breakfast Club. They now decided to buy every single family home in America. If they stay on the current trajectory, they will own 60% of homes in this country by 2030. They are literally trying to buy everything, he continued. RFK Jr. went on to note how BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, he's Jewish, who is on the board of the WEF, so he spoke at the WEF, is part of the cabal pushing for the Great Reset. So I talked all about Larry Fink and showing you the Israel connections to the to the directed energy weapons through Lockheed Martin, through their own system Raphael, which is part of it, and then showing you how Israel will, you know, they're trying to change the judiciary and trying to set it up where they can be the world supreme court with their Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin members are the ultra-Orthodox Jews that have all of these rabbinical laws that they want to put on the entire world. They are man-made viewpoints. They are not from the Bible. Yes, they want to include some of the Torah laws, but they're implementing things that are in their Talmud, written by rabbis. Okay, so Larry Fink, the BlackRock CEO, was speaking at the World Economic Forum meeting of 2023, and this was in January, January 24th. And it says, appearing at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting at Davos, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink argued that the pushback against ESG, not ESG investing itself, created what he views as an inaccurate narrative surrounding the term and produced what he considers to be animosity and polarization. So he said, we are trying to address the misconception of ESG investing. It's hard because it's not business anymore. They're doing it in a personal way. And for the first time in my professional career, attacks are now personal. They're trying to demonize the issues. That's fund giant BlackRock Incorporated's BLK, 0.87% Chief Executive Larry Fink's answer when asked this week at the glitzy Switzerland gathering of executives, economists, and pol politicians about the anti-woke pushback against Wall Streeters who see investment opportunity in fighting climate change. They say that Fink, meanwhile, has also been called out by environmental groups and was basically a couple of rabbis and some Jewish citizens who called him out for not dumping traditional energy fast enough. If you get onto the WEF website, wefforum.org, it says that Lawrence D. Fink and Fike Sambesma joined the World Economic Forum Board of Trustees. 
The Board of Trustees serves as the guardian of the World Economic Forum's mission and values. And Geneva, Switzerland, this was August 22nd of 2019 when Lawrence D. Fink, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of BlackRock, um, we joined the Board of Trustees for the World Economic Forum. Both have a track record of thought leadership and long-term success in business that will strengthen the forum's platform for public-private cooperation. Lawrence D. Fink co-founded BlackRock in 1988 and serves as its chairman and chief executive officer. In addition, he serves as a member of the Board of Trustees of New York University and is co-chairman of the New York University Langon Medical Center Board of Trustees. He also serves on the boards of the Museum of Modern Art and the Council on Foreign Relations, among other positions. And Fink earned an MBA with a concentration in real estate from the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA in 1976 and an BA in political science from UCLA in 1974. He is well known for writing an annual letter to CEOs, calling on business leaders to focus on sustainable, long-term value. He is a member of the forum's International Business Council. So again, RFK Jr. explains how BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard own a huge portion of the S&P 500 companies and they are also purchasing large numbers of homes in the USA and RFK Jr. claims that by 2030 they could own 60 percent of the single-family homes in America. The Washington Examiner reported that there is alarm about ESG which is seen by the media as a hobby horse of the right. A recent letter by 21 Republican attorney generals to assess managers portrays unaccountable power. A cartel of left-wing NGOs, blue state pension funds, several asset managers, and two firms that control almost the entire proxy advisory market, holding corporations hostage. They have a point. The top three asset managers alone cast about one quarter of votes at S&P companies' shareholder meetings, and the causes pushed by this ESG cartel range from defunding existing fossil fuel projects and mandating, mandating, mandating support for abortion rights to the discouragement of donations to the discouragement of donations to free market trade groups and Republican political candidates. Regardless of your politics, this is economic power being used to curtail the First Amendment. So it comes as little surprise when conservatives such as Senator Ted Cruz, Republican Texas, say that BlackRock CEO Larry Fink a Jewish man, and his peers should be barred from voting on behalf of other investors to advance their own political interests. The Texas Senator added, that is not capitalism, that is abusing the market. Bernie Sanders said, if you have three Wall Street firms that combined are major stockholders in over 90% of the major corporations in America, determine who is on the board of directors. I think that is real power. Robert Kennedy Jr. now running against President Joe Biden for the Democratic nomination for president made the explicit connection of the power of these Wall Street firms with ESG mandates. Climate issues and pollution issues are being exploited by, you know, the World Economic Forum and Bill Gates and all of these big mega billionaires Kennedy said in an interview with talk show host Kim Iverson. They've given climate chaos a bad name because people now see that it's just another crisis that's being used to strip mine the wealth of the poor and to enrich billionaires. The most important solution 
for environmental issues, not top-down controls, is free market capitalism. What we have in this country now is not free market capitalism. It's corporate crony capitalism, Kennedy said, calling corporate climate campaigns a cushy kind of socialism for the rich and a brutal, barbaric, merciless capitalism for the poor. So what did we see with Oprah Winfrey and The Rock? Billionaires asking for money from those who aren't doing so well. While many Democrats will dismiss Sanders and Kennedys as outliers, their progressives can also see that the ESG cartel is cartoonishly elite, and they are perpetrating a gross violation of antitrust law, a set of regulations revered as sacred by many on the left. The ESG cartel violates antitrust law by communicating ideological and commercial directives in flagging bulletins directed exactly how boards should vote. These actions are clear and openly stated violations of the Sherman Antitrust Act, which outlaws coordinated conspiracy in the restraint of trade. No less a progressive luminary than Lena Kahn, chairwoman of the Federal Trade Commission, wrote, the antitrust laws don't permit us to turn a blind eye to an illegal deal just because the parties commit to some unrelated social benefit. Are we seeing the emergence of a left-right coalition to curb the ESG cartel? If so, it will not be for the sake of a single issue or party, but to protect the forgotten man and woman, the consumer who buys and the worker who saves. So the WEF agenda for 2023... Um, was held on the theme cooperation in a fragmented world and it convened leaders from government business and civil society to address the state of the world and discuss priorities for the year ahead well you know none of them have been voted into power they've not been elected they're self-appointed how powerful is BlackRock BlackRock Incorporated is an American multinational investment company based in New York City. Founded in 1988 initially as an enterprise risk management and fixed income institutional asset manager. BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager with U.S. $8.59 trillion in assets under management as of December 31st of 2022. So now they have more than that amount of trillions. Okay, so when King Charles III gets up there at the WEF and he says, with trillions at his disposal, and they all have stocks in BlackRock, and BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street all are a conglomerate together and really one, working as one. This is basically a monopoly and these monopolies are something that is illegal so when King Charles III said with trillions at his disposal BlackRock is the one that has trillions Larry Fink has trillions at his disposal and King Charles III and Larry Fink are spokespeople top of the head of the echelon of the WEF and speak there frequently every year. But there's something else now. Does BlackRock own Pfizer? BlackRock, which owns 8% of AstraZeneca and 6.8% of Pfizer, is encouraging discussions between the two companies, according to Bloomberg, which cited anonymous sources. As AstraZeneca's largest shareholder, BlackRock could carry considerable weight in the ongoing bidding process. So you see how they're all embedded in every 
little bit of society and why these restrictions went down so harsh on society and causing you to breathe in your own carbon so they wouldn't go into the air and stopping you from traveling on planes so that the carbon didn't go into the air they don't want you to travel this is why they want the 15 minute cities and meanwhile they can travel all over the world like a bunch of big shots here's something for you does BlackRock own Tesla BlackRock 2 is a massive Tesla shareholder ranked number three it owns more than 178 million shares or 5.6 percent of the shares outstanding so that makes you question Mr. Musk alright so does BlackRock own Coca-Cola BlackRock owns 6.9 percent of Facebook 6.45 percent of Coca-Cola 5.7 percent of Amazon 6.4% of Lockheed Martin. They're the ones making the directed energy weapons, the lasers, for the federal government. 6% of Philip Morris and 6.5% of Chevron. Why BlackRock owns the world. Uniting businesses to the world, BlackRock is one of the, listen, listen for it, BlackRock is one of the four horsemen of the global economy, along with Fidelity, Vanguard, and State Street. And they are infamous for owning most of the world's major companies and media outlets. So if Oprah Winfrey is the queen of the media, she's connected to all these people making it almost impossible to conduct an economic transaction without encountering these companies. Does BlackRock own Target? Where we saw all these, you know, sex change things. Target is not owned by hedge funds. The Vanguard Group Incorporated is currently the company's largest shareholder with 9.3% of shares outstanding. BlackRock Incorporated is the second largest shareholder owning 7.4% of common stock and State Street Global Advisors Incorporated. InfluenceWatch.org reports Larry Fink's political purgatory. The BlackRock CEO can't seem to buy progressive absolution. The journal's editors wrote that even as Fink had promised to sell coal investments, that offer didn't spare BlackRock from multi-city protests by Climate Ultras meant to coincide with the firm's annual meeting for shareholders. Protests included an online flyer claiming BlackRock was the largest or second largest shareholder in big oil giants and the biggest single investor in the 56 companies most responsible for building new coal plants in the developing world. Wow. BlackRock has also been criticized for having major investments in China where the dictatorial government frequently commits human rights violations and offends the principles espoused by left-leaning environmentalists. So all of that diabolical stuff they did to those people in Shanghai, it was all perpetrated by these people. It clearly pins the tail on the donkey. So let me reiterate, because I talked about the directed energy weapons, the lasers being built by Lockheed Martin, is Lockheed Martin owned by BlackRock? And this was published February 7th of 2023. BlackRock Incorporated has filed an SC 13G slash A form with the Securities and Exchange Commission, known as SEC, disclosing ownership of 17,834,881 shares of Lockheed Martin Corporation. This represents 6.8% ownership of the company. Okay, so they own the shares 
in the Lockheed Martin Company at BlackRock. And BlackRock has this violation history of indigenous native tribes or peoples. And they're buying up the single family homes. Do you think that there's a connection to Lahaina and the wildfire there that was not natural? And the directed energy weapons, the lasers, and let me just tell you some more here. The companies this BlackRock actually own, as expected, BlackRock's top equity holdings include America's most established tech companies, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. BlackRock also has large positions in um, NVIDIA and Broadcom which happen to be America's two largest semiconductor companies. Who is the biggest defense contractor in the world? It's Lockheed Martin Corporation. Lockheed Martin Corporation was awarded contracts by the U.S. Department of Defense worth $45.68 billion in 2022, which made up for nearly 70% of its annual revenue. Now remember that I told you that Israel is working with Lockheed Martin as well. So they are connected to building the laser weapons. This concerns me and what made me aware that things were not going to be too great during the tribulation with when the ultra-orthodox come to power and they submit the entire world under their rules and laws and if you break their rules and laws they can have you put in jail they can uh, have you killed whatever they determine by a court of law as the world supreme court so here is the thing owning part of the companies that you know were mandating taking the shot you want to know something strange Benjamin Netanyahu told these pharmaceutical companies that Israel would be a good country to um, he used the word experiment during the planned demic I have to use my words carefully. Um, would you believe he has the syringe that was used on him in a little case in his office, like on display? Why would you do that unless this was the tool that was going to be used to make the entire world submit to their eventual worldwide rule under their Supreme Court Sanhedrin with the king they put on the throne as the world leader. Not a conspiracy theory. This is actually happening. So who owned Vanguard and BlackRock? BlackRock is not owned by a single individual or company. Instead, its shares are owned by a large number of individual and institutional investors. You've got to know that Oprah Winfrey's in on it. She's the queen of the media. And they own the majority of the media, which is why they're suppressing Donald Trump in the media and only allowing you to hear what they want you to hear and not allowing you to see the devastation on Maui. The biggest institutional shareholders such as the Vanguard Group and State Street are merely custodians of the stock for their clients. So there you go. That's their purpose. And they are custodians for BlackRock stock. Okay, you're going to love this connection. Does BlackRock own Disney? Fintel reports that BlackRock has filed a 13G-A form with the SEC disclosing ownership of 120.97mm shares of Walt Disney Company. This represents 6.6% .6 of the company. Now you know why all of this gender junk has been coming out in the Disney and 
you know, forcing it on people. Now it says, what company owns the world? BlackRock is one of the four horsemen of the global economy, along with Fidelity, Vanguard, and State Street. They are infamous for owning most of the world's major companies and media outlets, making it almost impossible to conduct any economic transaction without encountering them. I think I read that once before, so you'll have to forgive me. Who was known as the queen of all media and was once the world's only black billionaire? Oprah Winfrey. She's known as the queen of all media and was once the world's only black billionaire. So I want to mention something. Um, sometimes people that were interviewed by Oprah Winfrey sometimes it caused a division in their relationship or it caused a division between members of families and what I mean by that is if you ever read Maite Garcia's book about Prince and being married to him it clearly showed how Oprah needled her way in at a time when Maite and Prince were grieving over the loss of their baby and she wanted to get the scoop and the goods on it and basically demanded to know from them right on TV how it was with this baby. The baby died but in Prince's mind the baby was with the Lord so he said it was all good. And this caused a big rift between Prince and Maite and they wound up being divorced. I see the same pattern happening with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and the rift between the royal family and her aiding to the rift by doing an intrusive interview. It is said, according to the Wall Street Journal, that Winfrey pocketed between $7 million and $9 million for her infamous sit-down interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And by the way, years ago, when they had the really neat Victoria's Secret stores that, you know, had really nice bathrobes and things other than just skimpy lingerie, you know, um, they were really designed really nicely and Oprah Winfrey's closet was the size of a Victoria's Secret store. Now I don't personally have anything to say against this woman other than just let the facts be the facts and the truth be the truth and show what is the truth. So I'm just sharing some more of the connections and how they are trying to turn our world upside down basically and using their wealth to do these things that they have not been elected or voted in by the people which violates our constitutional rights you know I'm not talking about Oprah Winfrey with that I'm just talking about BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street and you know how they're owning these stocks and shareholders of Lockheed Martin using the directed energy weapons and oh the same group happens to be against native peoples and taking all the single family homes away so put two and two together and just you know you can figure it out you can figure out about the fires now Today I have to tell you, actually this morning I had my window open and I smelled smoke and I thought, gosh, is somebody smoking a cigarette and it's wafting over here? It turns out, can you believe it, that all of the horrific Canadian wildfires are out of control. The smoke is wafting down into Colorado from Canada. And that's where our smoke is coming from. And as I looked out across the front range of the Rockies, I could see smoke settled in there. And they gave us 
you know, an air alert not to breathe that. And of course, I'm dealing with congestion, so it doesn't help me any. And I'm going to tell you something. I just had an incident where this doctor refused to give me any more of the medication I had. She gave me five pills for over the weekend. And I told her that I still had congestion and she will not give me any more medication. I've never had a doctor ever do this because she's assuming it might be a certain thing when there's all kinds of other things that have very similar symptoms. Now, I've had bronchitis before, and it's very much like that. I do not have a sore throat, and that is a sign of that particular thing. I don't have that. She won't give me any medication unless I go take that test. And I just think that's an outrage. Why did she give me medicine in the first place, and it's working, and now she won't give me any more of it? And what kind of horrible doctor does that? These people are terrible doctors. They have been. They took me completely off insulin and gave me this Trulicity shot. And as soon as I took it and I went in to go eat something, and before I could order, I was telling the hostess, you know, she, she said, are you okay? You don't look okay. And this was, this was another time. This wasn't now. Um, I said, actually, no, I'm not feeling that great. And I said, I just was taken off insulin. I was given this Trulicity shot. And I just took the first one. And she goes, oh, no. Please be careful of that. She said, my boyfriend got really, really sick and had to go to the hospital when he took that. And he kept taking it for some reason. I don't know why. Just didn't grasp that it was terrible but of course um, there's lawsuits now on some of the similar products but this one made me ill for four and a half days and before I could even order or anything right after she told me that I had to get up and run to the restroom and you know got very sick and I was sick for four and a half days after this so you know, this is why I've been dealing with a health battle for a long time. You know, the stress of not having our home anymore and wondering how I'm going to get out of the hotel. And it's it's just a, you know, week-to-week -week survival mode. And I'm doing the work that I can and trying to get doors to open for more. And it's very difficult beyond what anybody knows. So, I do have my over-the-counter decongestant stuff, and I'm just praying that God will, you know, heal me and use that to heal me. And I will never, ever go to this doctor again. You know, they gave me something that made me more sick than I was trying to get off the medication so I wouldn't be sick. You know, it's just like, what is the problem here? So... I just wanted to show you that just after my videos, RFK Jr. comes on and talks about those three companies that are working together as one conglomerate and that they're controlling the world and, and making the directed energy weapon lasers that are on the Navy destroyers. So I would like to read a comment by this gentleman, Jonathan Bunce, 7405. He left this comment under one of the Lahaina videos. And this is what he said. He said, Hello, I am a captain of a high seas tuna long line vessel based out of Honolulu. I witnessed something that I don't think anyone is aware of. During the week of the devastating fires that hit Maui, the United States Navy just happened to be conducting military drills at sea. 
I have fished here for seven years, and we as fishermen are usually notified by form of letters and announcements by U.S. Coast Guard on VHF radio for two weeks daily broadcasting that Navy will be conducting drills at such and such location. Please stay away 200 miles from approximate zone. The drills and training exercises the Navy does is always held northwest of Oahu, usually above Kauai, 200 miles or so. Well, last month, a big portion of our tuna fleet was fishing anywhere from 200 to 400 miles north of island of Maui, consisting of 40-plus vessels. Well, two days before the Maui fires started, the three naval ship, one being a frigate, one destroyer, and he said, I'm not sure of the other, arrived on the fishing grounds unannounced and proceeded to kick us all out of the area with warnings of if you do not, you could be blown out of the water. I passed two of the ships as we moved on to other fishing areas. Number 55 out of San Diego was close enough to see that day. Well, I'm not starting a conspiracy theory, but now, with the devastation that's happened in Maui, I began thinking, this is really weird that just by chance, the Navy, just out of the blue, decided to conduct drills and training that week with no announcements beforehand. This has never happened anywhere without announcing first, same on East Coast dealing with NASA and Navy as well. So I'm really curious as to why the Navy just happened to be sitting and cruising back and forth, some of this is spelled wrong, above island of Maui pre-fire days and vanished from the area almost immediately after fires started. I know this caused vessels from further offshore that were not fishing in our area pass through that area on the way back to Oahu to offload their catch and no naval ships to be seen anywhere by eye or radar. So it seems very suspicious that they were out there. Could it have been to coordinate drones with lasers or satellites? Well, actually what I reported is that it is the naval destroyer that has the directed energy weapon mounted on it. And he saw at least one of the ships was a destroyer. He said, very odd, the whole episode, because they never conducted any drill or training exercises before with public announcements to the fishing fleet and to owners. I've seen tons of videos of melted cars and almost selectively burnt areas in the fires. Hopefully one day, the truth of what happened will come out. He said, it all stinks to me. Something was not right about what happened on Maui that dreadful day. God bless everyone who went through this awful situation and anyone truly helping. We fishermen band together at fish auction and collected over 30,000 pounds of food, water, and supplies to be delivered to Maui by a fishing vessel only to have Harbor Master and FEMA turn them around at Ma'alia Harbor and not let us help. My opinion, this was all planned and coordinated. When did it become against the law to help fellow men and women? I'd say something rotten. And he's basically saying that there's something rotten going on there. I told you that the naval destroyer, Daniel Inoue, that destroyer ship was a, um, can't think of it, it's a certain class ship that's identical to the ship that has the directed energy weapon on it. Arleigh Burke is the name of the class of destroyer, and it's an Arleigh Burke class destroyer and it had sailed around the Hawaiian Islands and stopped in Lahaina. So this was prior to the fires happening at some point. So you can make of these facts what you wish. I'm just bringing it all together and trying to show you all of these connections and how 
we need to be praying to the Lord God of Israel, to our Savior, our Redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, to please come quickly, Lord Jesus, Yeshua, and take us to be where you are. We do not want to come under the yoke of this wicked group of people. So, God is going to bring justice for those who burnt up in the fire that were innocent people. The justice is coming. The wrath is coming. And it will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm sorry to say that Israel is involved with connecting with all of these groups. And I also did a video about exactly a year prior to the pandemic. I showed you how they had made a copper syringe and they were saying that if they lifted this thing up like Moses' serpent on a pole, that it would heal people. A year later comes the pandemic. I think there's connections to all of it, frankly. And I told you how I was shocked. I went running off my hammock and I came back. The Lord put it on my heart that there were ten plagues in Egypt from the rod lifted up. And they were supposed to be inscribed on the rod. Ten plagues. I looked on the syringe and there were ten Hebrew letters. Each one stood for the plague. Somebody is coordinating this. Somebody who wants to elevate themselves in their own righteousness and not accept the king of righteousness as their king. Alright, it's a powerful video. I hope I've given you something to mull over and that you'll think about. And we know that the Bible tells us that these are the people that are going to fight and war against the Lamb. And they are already doing that because we have the Lamb. He's our King and our Savior. And when they're fighting against us, they're fighting against the Lamb. But the Lamb overcame them. And they will not win. Because there's one coming from heaven. And he speaks the word, the sword of God out of his mouth. And these people will be the ashes under our feet. They will suffer the fate of hell. And exactly what they did to those people is going to be their fate. And they will be remembered no more in the kingdom of God to come. Because only righteousness will reign there. And it will be the righteousness of the Lord. And we only obtain righteousness through accepting Him as our righteousness. Because only he is the, you know, perfect Adam without the sin and death curse that came upon the entire world. So this is why it's important to believe in him, give your heart to him, the Lord Jesus, and accept his covenant in his death, burial, and resurrection on the cross on the third day. And covered by the blood of the Lamb taken out of the hands of the enemy and placed in the hands of God. Those are my mom's words, which I dearly love, and I love her very much. You can see what we're under now. There's no doubt about the connections. There's no doubt about who's behind these fires. They have had over 600 fires in Louisiana alone recently this summer. Canada's on fire. Washington's on fire. You know, now we got the smoke here. So, we need justice to come. And it's on its way because it won't be long before the heavenly God who created the universe will put an end to these wicked people. Alright, I've got to go. I'm really tired and... I'm trying to get better, but, you know, with an awful doctor like this, I will just never go there again. This is not the first thing that's happened. They couldn't care less about the fact that I haven't been feeling my feet for three years, you know. 
So, God help me. All right, well, how do you end this? I don't know. Stay strong in the Lord. Put on the full armor of God every single day so that you can knock out the fiery darts of the devil. And be praying for God's justice to come. I've got a few people that need to experience that justice. And I need justice for me. <laughs> so, just putting the pieces of this puzzle together. God bless everyone and keep you safe. I'll see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, and share. And please support my work on my channel. You know, I'm just making it from week to week, basically. I wish I could, you know, <laughs> get above and beyond that where I could get out of here. So, anyway, it's up to God. I'll talk to you later, guys. Shalom for now.